ago it was. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to hand over now to Jude and Rita. Uh, and um, Mate is our, Might is our special guest uh, for this evening. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just hand over. Thank you very much, Jude and Rita. Thank you. Well, Rita and I are both Soviet child over on Twitter. And we are, we, we tweet about Soviet animation and about um, Soviet period, uh, children's art in particular. So yeah, that's the Soviet child thing. But we started to do this series of perestroika focused animation presentations for London Animation Club and because we're really interested in it. And so, so it was a kind of a, a, a long sort of break in the, well, basically when uh, Soviet Union broke up, it was uh, several years of uh, so sort of tumultuous time when uh, um, animators had uh, more politically more freedom to do things and but they still had the state funding which uh, soviet union used to fund a, a lot uh, put a lot of money into animation so there was money and people were able to do as interesting things so that's why we've been uh, concentrating on perestroika but this time um, <clears throat> we're going to talk uh, about Arvonut uh from um, estonian animation uh, <laughs> we are and um i wanted to just first of all bring up a map of estonia because i know that uh, probably most of us here because we're su super smart and um very worldly if even might not um we know estonia but just just here we are um a little map of estonia in in the baltics because it isn't a country that is talked about too much in the UK, for instance, where and we are in London, London Animation Club. And yes, it's a, it's a Baltic country and it was part of the Soviet Union, but it became independent again in 1991 when the Estonian Soviet Union broke up. And unlike a lot of the other countries in the Soviet Union, like I've been talking to people from Georgia is one example of uh, countries from the former Soviet Union that didn't afterwards didn't do so well with their animation because capitalism made it very difficult uh, during the Soviet times there was a lot of money for studios to create uh, work because it was state funded then came perestroika you've got this mixed thing a bit of chaos then after the breakup of the Soviet Union for a lot of countries it was really difficult and some of the animation studios kind of collapsed and that certainly was the case that my friend said about Georgia but Estonia broke the rules and it's gone from strength to strength and isn't it thanks to people like and particularly Arvo Nut and other people in Estonia who worked in the studios and who also have loved animation in Estonia and, and it has really broken that rule. Really well, I, think, oh, I think it is true, despite that objection, that Estonia is really strong <laughs> for animation. And um, and even now there's two big studios, there's Nuku Film and Eunice Film. And yeah, so Nuku <laughs> Film is a um, um... Stop, stop motion, puppet animation, and Yoni's film is 2D and 3D. The, and I think Nuku film was uh, funded by Albert Tuganov in 1958, and then the Yoni's film in the 70s. Uh, and they both are now um, private studios, which do fantastic films. And uh, we have a guest who might last today, who is award-winning uh, film uh, animation film director and producer and a teacher and uh, everything. <laughs> and, <Morris. laughs> Could I just cut in here for for a second? Sorry. 
to cut the flow. Um, could you, for the for the audience, do you mind turning your microphones off? Because I think we're getting a little bit of sound bleed in the background. So if you don't mind doing that now, it uh, just makes life a little uh, easier for us. Thanks very much. Great. So yeah, we got Mike is we're very lucky because Mike's going to lead the presentation, and it's an it's a commemoration as well. We're remembering um, Arvo because he died earlier this year, and yet he has been through uh, Estonian cinema animation since right since 1958. Just an amazing contribution, and particularly as a cinematographer. And we really want to honour him tonight, and we want to just sort of skip through his his career. Um, and Mike's going to help us look at him and remember him and look at it through his eyes because uh, sixty years. Anyway, I think this is a good moment to go over to fantastic Mike Lass, who's our special guest. So, yes. Thank you, thank you, uh, Rita, and uh, thank you, Jude, and thank you, Martin, and uh, thank you, London. It's, uh, I think it's an honor uh, before the night uh, and tell the story like the, the children's story, like a fairy tale. But in fact, I think uh, it has been kind of fairy tale, but in real life, what has happened? And uh, I am really happy that, uh, that you have chosen um, from animation of uh, so-called Soviet period um, and and also very good uh, example how we, the people had managed in uh, new society the Arvanut who has uh, not been like film director but he has been a um, like cameraman but not just a cameraman but the man who has given his uh, heart to the animation and uh, it, it has almost eight years when he has born after the actually at the time of the Second World War. And he was 20, it was 61 when he was going uh, at this time, uh, the Soviets um, quite um, new studio Nuku film, actually Tallinn film it was at this time. And uh, Arvo, Arvo was actually self-made man. I have to say at first that he was not studying as uh, almost all the filmmakers of 60s in Estonia, in, especially in animation, that they had studied uh, through the work so that his, um, uh, his uh, back actually is uh, in, in high intelligence and uh, he has read a lot of books. So it, he was educated by himself and um, we can say that uh, the way how Arvo has uh, coming into the animation, it was very common way until uh, 90s, when uh, Breed Bern was involved in the educational system of Estonian animation. And this time, until this time, uh, most filmmakers were all autodidacts people who had uh, interest in animation, tell the stories and uh, they had kind of talent. So they were like chosen through the work. And maybe it is kind of um, a rule what is unwritten. And, uh, and also it is, um, how to say the fresh look, maybe to the world or, or the, that they had to learn the things by doing something, they discovered the new world by themselves, and uh, and then they made mistakes, and they also find uh, they had had also uh, win at the same time. So things what maybe we can't say see in another field so much. And what is also important to keep in mind generally that uh, Arvo is also kind of bridge between the socialist system and also the capitalist system. He's really like a person who had a calm mind, clever thoughts and cool people around himself, that it helped survive the, the collapse of the one living style or one thinking style and kind of way to make art. 
and bring it uh, until nowadays when it's still alive. He was involved 60 years. And uh, I would like to present you, if you don't mind, at first uh, the film from uh, 65. It's the time when Arvo Nut was coming into the studio and in Estonia, in, in Estonia, in Soviet Estonia, it was very interesting times because then there were, were um, let's say, the progressive people were the people who had uh, born after the World War. So that they were a kind of fresh feeling of kind of freedom and kind of uh, pop art and uh, and also the film is what i will be uh, will show you at the soviet time it was very common that uh, the things what you will see doesn't mean exactly what you see and it's very common to estonian animation that you have to think a very allegorical way i um i just spoke with my mother who who however is from Moscow, uh, about our last uh, perils of perestroika, because because we um, uh, we showed the Breed Parents film uh, uh, Breakfast on the Grass. And she said to me that you could have never imagined to do so straightforward talking film in Russia. I think uh, that uh, maybe in Estonia there was a little bit more of a chance to, to tell a little bit more straightforward things than, than there were, but maybe that's because it was done during the 80s. Yeah, but also 60s was also kind of uh, interesting thing, uh, the things that were not allowed to make in Moscow or in St. Petersburg or in another big uh, cities of Russia. Uh, that uh, in Estonia it was somehow possible because Estonia was for uh, Russian people like West part or yeah. it's yeah. a window to the West. And actually in Estonia, we had had possibility to see the Finnish television. And we had kind of through the, the television kind of imagination about the things, how looks the butter in nice uh, covering or uh, or we had uh, seen the colors, but usually were not possible to see in uh, everyday life of maybe in uh, Soviet uh, countries. So that um, it uh, it was kind of a way to think in one hand in a very Western style, but uh, to make them in Soviet uh, system. Yeah, and, uh, I've got quite a few Estonian friends who do music and they look at the uh, looking back at the vinyl history as well in Estonia, and they said to me, "Oh, Estonia had more jazz because it was seen, and it was seen as the west of the east." Exactly what you're saying. Yes, okay. exactly. It was also the jazz music what was coming through the Estonia in '68. Uh, to the, it was like uh, not so. Um, it was like avant-garde at this time. And, and the next film, what I will show, it's also kind of avant-garde in these terms that this music is also written by Arvo Pärk, for example, who was a huge um, composer for a Nuku film in the area of 60s and uh, beginning of the 70s. And uh, this is exactly the film, it's a mouse hunt, hunt mouse hunt, and uh, it is uh, like Arvo Nuts uh, first films as a cameraman and Arvo Nut uh, in youth, he was also like in one of the gangs of the gangs of the cities when the young men were like in the leather uh, jackets and uh, motorbikes and uh, they were um, uh, kicking each other in different areas. But Arvo Nut uh, has already overcome it, but it was like underground. Uh, underground uh, scene, scenario or scene where was special music and also it was kind of opposite of the at this time uh, leading uh, veterans of second world war and and this uh, film maybe will give you also kind of uh, attitude or how to how to show the things but are not always allowed to show directly 
how the camera and the lightning and then the colors are composed like um, under the viewpoint of artist, director and, uh, and uh, cameraman. And the director of this film is actually Elbert Tuganov, and uh, who was already over 40 years old and the young uh, cameraman who was 24 at this time. Shall I roll it? Please. You should be able to share this. I've shared the screen with you now. Um, yes. Might, so yes. it should be. Yes, I will do it. But it, it don't allow me to optimize the video clip. But this is one moment. One moment, I will do it quickly. It, I, I am not maybe so good, but I will uh, do it quickly. One moment. So one moment. Yes, it, now I will match. Uh, one moment. So, so. Oh, but what you see? <laughs> yeah, we can see. We can see your screen. Uh huh. And with the film title, yes. Uh, I can see the logo at the front. It, now it will come. Yeah. Oh, hunt, hunt from sixty-five. <laughs> Cats will have a connection with them. 
The black cats will look for the moist spot. As a little, the colors are not very common at this time for general Soviet animations. It, it looks like a little bit different. More colors and more like pop art. Attitude. That was uh, that was uh, this uh, beginning of Aronut's uh, work uh, as a young man with the uh, middle age uh, years uh, of the Elberto Gaunam and Heino Barres as their um, closest uh, person, the man who uh, was able to visualize the, their uh, thoughts to the screen and also bring uh, to their work uh, like uh, young energy who is uh, experimenting and who is uh, making uh, quite uh, new things at this Soviet uh, animation scene, but not only in the Soviet animation scene, but also in the scene of uh, worldwide. And the uh, next film, if you don't mind, I will uh, present you the film Nail. Probably the many of the, you have already seen, but Arvo Nuth has uh, got uh, with this film as a special prize from the festivals as a cameraman. And it uh, was also quite uh, unusual for this time that the cameraman uh, will get the prizes for his work. And uh, as we had before seen the film uh, from the beginning or in the middle of the 60s uh, by Elbert Toganov, then the next film, Nail, is more like philosophical. And uh, it has also kind of um, criticism to the administrative uh, side of the Soviet Union and, and, um, and also kind of social, uh, social approaches are there hidden. And uh, I think that uh, the nail was uh, the most uh, outstanding work in 60s and 70s even by his uh, content wide and also from his visual style. And uh, Arvo Nuth has you know, worked there very heavily with the light and also with the different materials, electrical materials, but through his, um, uh, how to say, through his uh, intuition, he has brought them somehow through the minimalistical, uh, how to say, minimalistical feelings, like uh, one harmony, the different scenes and different materials in animation. And I will show you the film Nail, who also was at the same time with the Soviet uh, very famous film Ota Sa, Nu Bagadi. 
and they shared the same um, prize, first prize in the USSR Film Festival for animation. So I will now uh, share a moment. I will open it at first. So, and we will see, see the one uh, scene. And what is also the background that at this time in this 71 was also starting point for Estionis film, who was, uh, was run by Rain Ramat with the uh, new uh, total new uh, approach to the animation that the films are not made for the children anymore but they are more philosophical so that also the Elberto Ganam and the you know Paris they was also forced to find a new language and new topics for themselves that uh, to be able to compare with the uh, Estionis film uh, young filmmakers like Rain Rama and this is now their, uh, this is the film made by Heino Barres and cameraman is Arva Nut. And this is also a very good example of the animators who had to put uh, the nail as human being to life and how the uh, cooperative work between animator and cameraman has succeeded uh, with very good result. <laughs> animator or not, he's a dude. So this was uh, Arvo's um, approach to find solution, technical solutions for the things what uh, usually were not used at this time of puppet animation. We, ha we can think what has happened at this time in um, England. It was like uh, born of uh, Eng English, fresh young generation in, in puppet animation. We can see also what had happened in the USA 
and we can see also what has happened in uh, in uh, puppet animation in uh, Russia or Soviet Union. So it was uh, technically and also content-wide something uh, fresh at this time. And it uh, has also brought uh, lots of attention to the um, Nuku film apartment of Tallinn Film Studio. So that uh, Arvo was kind of experimentator, technical experimentator in 70s. And he has got so, uh, lots of uh, support uh, uh, from the government. For example, next example. You can nowadays not imagine something like this. They wanted to go with the uh, Heino Bars for further and break the limits of animation at this time. So physically and also mentally. So the next film uh, as a, a technical example was the underwater uh, livings. To shoot these films, it should uh, the, by the script, the things uh, happening under the water. The animated, anim uh, the, the puppets are animated under the water. And to shoot for that film, they were flying with all team, another side of the world to the Kamchatka, from Estonia to Kamchatka, with all that <laughs> technical equipment, animators, and they, they were going to their ocean because there was water so clean that you can shoot under the water. And Arvo Nut, as a cameraman, he has um, studied the, the aqua langist, uh, how to say, how to go on with aqua, aqua langist under the water and shoot there. So that he has made some courses to be able to go in deep water, under the water. And uh, they were living like two months nearby the ocean, another side of uh, Soviet Union. And they had uh, shot it, but finally they find out that uh, it's not so easy to shoot under water in the ocean. So for that, they were built a huge aquarium for them, where the fishmen had brought all the fishes for the shooting at, at in this uh, huge aquarium. Was so, that in Kamchatka? Because Kamchatka, that's right the other side of... Yes, Russia. it's, a, it's, it's a nearby already uh, in Japan and uh, this yeah. another side. So Just for that, they, because it's a clean water, probably. Did they end up shooting in Estonia in the end, in aquarium or in, in Kamchatka? <laughs> in, in, in Kamchatka, they uh, shoot it there in aquarium, but still they... And it shows the ambitions of those men that, and also the support of the government in these terms to make experiments in in animation field. That uh, to, and it was uh, how to say that uh, with the previous films what they have made, they had uh, proved that uh, their talent is there, and and it is um, there is something that uh, they trying to find out that to break the animation, what they had until now made. And, uh, and uh, it ends up with this kind of film. I will show it is from the uh, 60, se uh, 73 underground water livings. I will show you. Right. I hope that it's able to follow. So I hope that you see. I will a little bit jump forward. There are two youngs who had developed a new car. And uh, they tried to build up this machine. And they were going. Uh, the uh, side, but the car don't act as they expected, and they don't know how anymore to drive with this car. 
kind of change the whole story right now. And uh, of course, the underground water livings. And the music is by a little band. Again. Somebody is looking for us. Can you help us? We don't under, we don't understand or and they don't understand us. I thought that they can't read. So it is kind of experiment in Kamchatka just to show uh, that how ambitious they were there. These fishes don't live in Estonian waters. So if you will come to Estonia, don't be afraid to go into the seaside. They are just down there. Or in the very east. So, it was experiment. And uh, to know what had happened, I don't want to spoil the end of the film and I hope that you can sleep uh, also very well without knowing what happened with the boys under the water. I will say just that it was happy end and uh, the young guys are still living if they don't until now died out. So that, that film has happy end, but it was huge experiment and uh, and uh, it, there was a very important part of Arvo Nuut, uh, who was like the key person uh, in this time of um, experiments uh, in Nuku film. And uh, I just, uh, is it okay for you in this format or uh, if somebody will have some questions or comments or what do you think? Do you want to do a Q&A at the end, Jude and Rita, or how do you want to do it? Well, <laughs> well we just continue I forward. Think, I think we should just continue because it's really good and we want to see all the clips and we don't want to run out of time. Okay. I, I agree, I agree. I think you should just press on. Yeah, I, I just thought it's just fantastic. I just okay. show this. I will show you the next experiment from Arvan. These Utrecht. movies are such fun. They're brilliant. Fantastic. Keep showing them. <laughs> okay, I will go forward. Thank you for um, giving me the power. Go forward. I will show to you the next film, Bloody Chan, where uh, uh, there was approach for Arvo to bring together puppet animation with uh, cartoon backgrounds. So it was also kind of looking for a new form for a puppet animation because cartoon was really blooming right now in the world. And, uh, and uh, puppet animation or stop motion was somehow looking for new identity. And, and they looked not so much as maybe the content wide, 
as a form itself, so that they brought, tried to bring some kind of living, uh, fresh uh, visual style uh, into the life. And the next film, Bloody John, is kind of experiment uh, what was uh, combined by uh, 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 Edgar Walter, who was uh, actually um, very well known uh, illust illustrator and who also joined uh, for some films in the Yoni film later on. But um, it was quite an uh, experiment with two different uh, dimensions to bring them like one uh, moment together. I will share the screen. So here we are. Bloody John. It's an old uh, folk tale, folk ta uh, tale. Atlantian is Kuslain at Laksova. Atlantian is Kuslain at Laksova. Uxlaev shall so abroad to Talpur, you to meta. Uxlaev shall so abroad to Talpur, you to meta. It's kind of. Me te kallist Eesti maast otsata kaugel, sooja lõuna merel. Tema nöidlikult kaunite saarte ja kallaste peal, kus palmi ja pomerantsi puud magusad aisu annavad, teadsivad ja kartsivad kõik mere rööövlite peameest. Mitmete õitsvate linnade tuhaks tegijad ja merede hirmu päris tšonni. Everywhere at the sea, and there is a bloody. time here to quit, if you don't mind. And uh, what is important maybe to show or say 
that uh, most of the films of Soviet uh, era are almost all 10 minutes long. Why? It's strange enough if a director wants to make a three minute film or seven minute film, it's not allowed. It's only 10 minute story, but you can build up. You don't find <laughs> not shorter film and not longer even. 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Do, do you know why that was? It was because uh, the projectionist or the camera or the projector who what will show in the cinemas the films. They had the standard rule, what always has to be 10 minutes because it, it fits to the exactly fulfill the, the feel of the films and and uh, it was standard that the story must be 10 minutes long not six minutes and it's also very good to prepare the the shows for cinema it's very easy to calculate it was not the content wise but it was administrative and technical question was that the I've got a couple of questions quickly. Um, was that the same over the whole of the Soviet Union? Yes, it was in the whole of the Soviet Union and it was standardized so that you can see show the films around the world. And what was the biggest uh, fear, what the directors were afraid that uh, you have to make the film so, films so good that they can go around the, the Soviet Union. And uh, this was kind of uh, important that, um, because if you don't manage to go on the level of the Soviet Union, you don't get uh, money for the next film or you, are, you don't get, uh, or the studio don't get uh, mm, special money for, uh, for, for their livings and, and so on. So it was very important that um, it was quality mark itself. If you you if you you, uh, you were being shown around the Soviet Union itself, because there was a huge amount of people, more than two thousand uh, or three three hundred million people. So it was a big amount, and and uh, all those films were what you have seen until now were running in the cinemas uh, in the uh, Soviet Union before the length, feature length film. So that was like preparation, warming up films. Yeah, if they were successful, it, the people know them even now. Yes. <laughs> they had a yeah. long life. And I guess it was, uh, it was all very cinema dominated. We're not talking at all about television being part of the distribution at this time. Yes, it was also shown at the TV, black, white uh, TV, the richer uh, communists, they had also uh, colorful uh, films, but also, of course, there uh, in the 60s, it was more black and white, but later was also colorful films. But those films were shown for children at the uh, late night bye-bye uh, uh, films. And the children nowadays still who were growing up with, uh, with those films, they hated these films because uh, there was uh, something different than what you are used to see, for example, that Estonian, Estonian animation was something uh, terrible. You, you, you see the Knitten uh, characters are doing and fighting and, and it is not something very smooth and, and nice as Disney films, what was actually expected to see. They were clean and very, and very colorful and very, soft and, and uh, nice and clear here you because uh, Estonian animators they were like anti Disney movement that they especially wanted to make this kind of puppet animation that they are not uh, very smooth in terms I, I spoke with uh, Arnahi and this wide aesthetic of puppets puppet movements and also the camera work was something like combined and art the, uh, and designers work were like somehow combined a little bit to weird. And of course the materials were not like in Western part, it was also kind of compromise in between, let's say, to find the, 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 
the uh, harmony between the material and content, let's say this way also. But the next film, I think it is uh, what I will show you if you don't mind, is uh, 77. It was actually the first S3D, first puppet animation in S3D system. It means that you had to put the glasses on and uh, it was in, uh, it was made in cooperation between uh, the Nuku Film Department and, um, and the Research Institute in Moscow of uh, cinematography. And it was made for cinemas where you can put the glasses on, on 1977. And uh, this is a film where Arvo was uh, learning and he was educated to shoot and think and see the world as 3D, where you should put the parallax. And uh, Arvo was so talented that this film is still nowadays used for the 3D filmmakers in Eastern part, uh, how many they have. But it's also a very good example of psychology of to see the world 3D in a cinematical way that uh, it, it, it has a dramaturgy for the cameraman where he is only responsible to find the best the best uh, parallax or best uh, atmosphere for the cinema people. And I think in this film, we can understand also Arvanut as person himself. Arvanut as very calm and uh, with a big empathy feeling to the world and to the, his um, uh, directors and uh, the people with whom he worked. But see at first these little clips, clip from the film Souvenir, Memory. And it's a, a anti-war film in, uh, and the topic is uh, war in the Vietnam in the 60s. And when the soldiers were coming back from the war, and what they bring uh, from there to the society. And uh, the soldiers who were in this uh, war, that uh, they, they have something uh, what changed, not their only world, their world, but also the world around themselves. And, uh, and it's, uh, of course, this film is supposed to see with the three classes system. But now you will, you will see the one eye system, not with two eyes, but one eye system. So it's plain, but I hope that you will get some kind of uh, inspiration. One moment. One moment, I will share the screen. So here we go. Yeah, it's very important uh, what kind of angles the cameraman is using and the depth of the scene itself. And it's, it's really like special science, how the cameraman should take the uh, pictures and how the animator should animate the puppets, keeping in mind the, the camera work. I hope that maybe you can get, uh, get already the deep the depth of the uh, of the sea somehow.
only special, only special cinemas at this time. And it needed special screen to see it. I will uh, forward, sorry. Just to give you a feeling. And uh, it's also... Kind of a green turn in 77. Uh, this war film was really like a huge success at this time. Even it was not, uh, it, even it was uh, only possible to see in special cinemas. In uh, Soviet uh, uh, cinemas, where they were had special screen and special projector, because it's a seventy millimeter bright of the of the film, and. Uh, and they also, Arvo had made also another two films in the same uh, 3D style, uh, quite experimental. And then was basically the time uh, of uh, making together with uh, directors uh, Tuganov and Paris over, and the new generation was coming on. And now I will. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Arvo Nut uh, in person himself. Uh, before you do that, sorry to interrupt, Mike. Yeah. Um, do you mind checking that you've got the video optimization clicked in your intermediate? Um, it doesn't allow screen. somehow. This ah, time. Okay. That's uh, interesting. That it doesn't allow me sound. It can compromise, but not uh, the the picture. No, oh, okay. it, I thought the. Quality was really good. Oh, okay, oh. it's it's a bit jerky um, when I watch it, but oh, if it's yeah. if it's smooth for you, then that's fine. It, it's good here. Well, I was wondering, might would it be possible for you to to double click on the screen so we have it full screen? Oh, I see. Okay, then I understand you. Sorry, you <laughs> might say earlier. Yeah. I am sorry. One moment, but uh, I will try now to show you uh, the Arvo note himself. I shoot at him uh, one moment. Let's see when how it uh, how it will function now. One moment. I will do like as you said. Or moment. full screen. Uh, yes, so. yes. I'm yeah. sorry that you you are so uh, you have so much patience. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to to know that. Uh, and uh, now I will show you Arvanut in person when he explaining uh, his work together with uh, Eino Pars and uh, Elbert Tuganov and how it was to work with them because he was really like person um, who worked uh, 
with so different director like Elber Tugano, who was very rationalist, really rationalist and very concrete, and Heino Barres, who was kind of mystic, nature mystic, who, who was all the time in somewhere in the mist. And uh, Arvo Nut uh, had um, kind of empathy, both of them. And, uh, and uh, to manage to uh, find out what the director is trying to say and how to expose so different worlds, their own ways, but, not, uh, but in the same time to add the cinematographer viewpoint to their work. So here is Arvo Nut. I hope that it will be about now about Nino Barres. Yes, we have a lot of time to talk about it. Yes, yes, you can see it. Yes, the other side is the other side. The other side is the other side. All of this is the emotion. It was the emotion of my life. I was the emotion of my life. Selle parsi loo sees sossepea pidin tegema, see oli päris raske. Ma mängisin ette palju nagu stasse, mis on. Et seda meeleolu rabada, seda tempot, seda kõike seda rütmi kätte saadaks. Sest seal peab ikka, sest siin on salaja pandud ikka ka inimene. Igas see tegevus on ju nii. Ja nii on nugu juhtud seal samus on nagu. Seal peab olema ikka inimene taga. Tema mõte tuleb välja kuskilt. Tema mõtlemine tuleb ekraanit välja. Ja seda oli vaja luua, siis siuga soojaks tegemine oli väga tähtis. Täna tegin kohe päeva alguses hommikul valmis selle ühe plaani. Täna ühe kaupa kirjutasin välja iga plaani. Mis seal tuleb teha ja mis kord on nukk muidugi ja mingi kord on liikumine seal on, milline liikumine seal on. Kogu konstruktsioon oli kõik väga täpselt paika pandud ja hiljem seda konstruktsiooni muuta oli väga raske. Noh, kuni selline, et käib arutamine, ütleme seal enne võtteid, ütleme mingi enne seeni, et arutame, kuidas seda teha ja mis moodi see teha. Ja tulid seal välja oma ettepanekutega, mis puudutas just, ütleme, et ramaturgilist ülesehitust või seeni ülesehitust. Ta kuulas kõik väga olikult ära. Ja sai kõik läbi räägitud ilusti kenasti. Ja siis ma mõtlen selle peale. Järgine päev tuleb siis võtetele. Nii, ma mõtlesin. Ja Nikolai Ftarois kasutak kõik jääb nii nagu mina ütlesin. Mina nõudsin seda, mida ma tahtsin. Mõnigi ja ma isegi kahetsen, et mõnes filmides ma võib-olla tõesti Ansin järgi kellegi soovile või 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 soovitusele. So that was Arvo Nuut, the cameraman, talking about his directors with whom he had worked, and in the eighties they both they were retired, and Arvo was working with a young generation like Hardy Volmer and Riho Wint. But it's also kind of interesting uh, that uh, he was like uh, kind of teacher in terms that also for the new generation of the cameramen. So he, Arvo, was a very open-minded person, and uh, he shares his own experiences with also with others. That he was taking care that also the next generation. Uh, as I said, that there was not possible to another world to learn about animation, but it was all through the work. So that he shared his experiences, what he had had uh, until now. And also he was very good supportive for the young directors. Like, uh, as I mentioned before, Hardy Volmer and Riho Wint, I hope that we have still uh, some minutes time that just I will show uh, some uh, work uh, what he has made with a young generation and uh, and uh, and uh, maybe it's also interesting to see that uh, that uh, how the the aesthetic and also kind of uh, feeling of cameraman uh, is involved in the new generation work somehow of course it depends more of the 
uh, artist who was, uh, mm, but uh, the but the collaboration with uh, between a animator and cameraman is uh, and also with the artist is always very important. So it is just little short uh, clips to give you kind of feeling the 80s. We are out of the 70s and 80s coming with a new generation, new stories and uh, new uh, visions. And I will just help a little bit forward. Quicker. I'm sorry for the filmmakers. And this is like uh, how Arvo Mood was using for different scenes, different light, and is more like, uh, let's say, in the same uh, breathing with the younger uh, generation's visions. So that's important, maybe. So it was just little uh, feeling or atmosphere because the 90s are already there and the collapse of Soviet system is there. So Arvo has worked together with the classics of Estonian directors and with the young generation and he's already 50 years old. Yes, 50 years old. So you have the, I think maybe he had inside the feeling that uh, the time of the cameraman is over because the studio needs to be alive also in the new era. But nobody don't know how it will work because until now it was uh, Estonian filmmaking financial was um, together with Soviet, directly with the Soviet uh, cinematography uh, ministry. So that the, direct, the money was coming from there and uh, and now it's gone. And only what we have, we have the honor about the few, uh, past, we have talented film directors, and we had the audience who was looking for this kind of weird films internationally, and the young generation who basically <laughs> was hating the films, but because they were forced to see the films in uh, when they were like eight year old or, six year old from TV. But um, as their film directors were very intelligent and they were very, how to say, um, the, the, the society, they had a remarkable, a remarkable position in society in terms that they, they, their work were interesting and they were very talented. So, Arva Mood actually was a person, key person, who was uh, trying to collect the people, directors, animators around and make together a kind of uh, uh, privatized studio. And uh, this was uh, also with the Ionisim, that the di different departments of Thailand Film Studio, they were like trying to find out their own way to survive in this new society. And but technology just, is changing a huge amount at this time, isn't it, as well? And he's trained in this older technology that's amazing, but it's also quite cumbersome and sort of lighter. Technology. Yes, and, and, 
And yeah. there was also knowledge in, of the uh, puppet makers, the decorators. There was uh, approximately 30 person who were like in the best condition uh, mentally and also artistically. They were like really very good um, artists so that uh, how to go forward. And, uh, and what is uh, maybe important that the past, uh, past of studio allows to build up the new approach and and uh, of course the stories at first uh, what were made uh, in Nuku film studio privatized Nuku film with very little amount of money they were like fulfilled with kind of enthusiasm or 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 um, no, how to say the support of the uh, government was very little but still um, enough somehow to survive let's say of course, it was very hard to make decisions uh, for Arva is now in new position of the producer. He was producer because he was like, uh, he knows the content of the filmmaking at this time with this kind of technology. And uh, he has also kind of trust of peoples as a cameraman because he, he can listen to others, what the others are, and he is not exposing exposing himself uh, so much as uh, listen what the people around himself want to have in future so that it was kind of new new approach for him and of course the technology of shooting was changing and he was really like uh, into it so that I think the Nuku film studio was one of the first who was going uh, from analog system to digital system so that they had invented some technical tricks what allows us to shoot uh, digitally and also to find the kind of uh, way the, for the new aesthetic, what needs for the, the digital world, let's say this way. So he's kind of being a bit like a pivot, like he's uh, stabilizing things in a really difficult time when things are changing all around and he's facilitating by joining up um, older generation skills with the opportunities that are there for younger directors to express themselves. Yes, exactly. And uh, what is also important that uh, as, as he has kind of diplomat in these terms that he was very quiet, but uh, he really had connected people, maybe not so consciously, but uh, trust what the people had to him. It uh, it was uh, important. It was important and uh, brings up the new possibilities. Uh, and and, uh, and I think it is uh, very important uh, also for the uh, filmmakers who were not making the me mainstream films, but also kind of avant-garde in these terms that he supported this kind of mentality itself, not just... Uh, looking for the films what make the money, but also films what are important for animation culture itself, like Mati Küt or Andre Stenusar or uh, Kirlin Basovskaya, so that there was a continuous uh, artistical um, approach for the future as avant-garde. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I, if, if you are not uh, dead or not uh, tired very much, I can show just some maybe clips from Mati Kut film from 2010. Oh, yes, he's so great. Um, and I think we should move forward. Yeah, we should. Yes, just, just some to give some hints uh, what were uh, possible to do. Again, that uh, Arvo don't push too much also the, the filmmakers. It is also kind of very unique moment at this time that uh, he really uh, leaves the space and time and uh, for the filmmakers and their thoughts. So that, of course, the filmmakers themselves were very uh, good uh, <laughs> and very talented. So I love Matty Kurt's films. But it's a mighty good uh, film. Uh, um, from 10, 000, uh, 2010. I just some. Uh... 
Christ. Come on. Professional activity, trying to bring to the knees my professional activity. was a little bit about uh, mighty good uh, kind of very surrealistic word but very interesting and i think artistically very talented man so and uh, maybe shortly just some give you uh, give a little viewpoint also from the andres tenusar who is maybe not so uh, so many films uh, film he has made many films, but maybe not so visible as maybe the breed parents uh, students had. And I will show you little clips from the Andres Tenusar 2012, The Triangle Affair. It has got the crystal from the Annecy Film Festival 2013, if I don't know. No, I will now open it and share with you. Just um, uh, to show that even if Estonia has changed the uh, uh, social system, well, not, not social, but uh, sorry, it's already like midnight here, but uh, changed the living system, uh, but still the artists and their thoughts are possible to uh, to to. And of course, we have to say a very big uh, thank to Estonian Film Foundations, but all uh, who still actually support this kind of uh, filmmaking and this kind of ideas. And I think it's quite unique, unique in the world also. That without their help, it's not possible to survive. Let's say it's not only our route, but kind of attitude of Estonia's style.
So that was a little, uh, little piece from Andres Tenusar. And uh, it shows that, uh, that the atmosphere of studio is good. And, and, and this is actually full of life and Arvo is already already is over 70 and he's still producer in Nuku Film Studio under the pressure of filmmakers one hand and uh, another hand uh, of the of the film uh, phones a little amount of the material what they can use and uh, he somehow is very flexibly working in between of the this world and uh, and uh, and uh, 2013 was his uh, last film as a producer and he was working in the studio as a as a as a supporter for the filmmakers or making kind of uh, artistical uh, help for the the young uh, filmmakers or giving them the feedback and and i think it is uh, it, it is uh, not too much to say that thank you for Arvo to make uh, <laughs> the things what he has made. And it's, I think, not overestimated. But uh, of course, uh, I think that uh, nearby of Arvo and Estonia, there have been many of uh, talented filmmakers who have made very well that what they have made. And I think it is also very important to keep in mind that they work together. Even they were dif very different persons, but they were still able to work together and, and, uh, and uh, support each other more or less. And this is, I think it's very important in, in, um, in this uh, field to make uh, things uh, bigger as they look like. And, uh, I thank you very much that you had time to uh, to look at it and uh, Arvo has has had possibility in this year to became 80 years old but due to the covid uh, he was quickly left to uh, another side of the horizon and uh, and but still uh, we are able to see his uh, his work uh, what he has uh, done through the 60 years in Estonian animation. And this is not, uh, not, so, not so less, let's say. No. Sorry for my English, but I hope that you got it. We did. Um, yeah, thank you, Arvo, as yeah. well. Thank you, Mike, you know, for everything that... Um, and I think he's, not, his legacy goes on, I think, in Estonian animation because it is just so strong compared to so many other countries that have been through the the process of uh, what's happened with the collapse of the funding for animation and the demise of the Soviet Union but animation in Estonia seems really collaborative and really powerful and even now I mean I went recently and looked at the went to the toy museums and the puppet museums and was looking at the uh, tradition of puppetry and it's in in animation there and it is just it seems so strong and, and also it's making its way into uh, what do you call it live action cinema as well for November which was the recent horror film really great and it had a lot of puppetry in their characters and that's fantastic. Want to say something, Rita? <laughs> yes, uh, thank you, Jude, and thank you, uh, Rita, and thank you, Martin, and uh, thank you for others. And and I hope that uh, that in future, maybe uh, today we had a little viewpoint from uh, Arvo, but of course there are many filmmakers uh, around the world and also in Estonia uh, who still are working and uh, are actively working and maybe we don't have to wait when they were behind the horizon but already nowadays <laughs> it's possible to give and see their uh, works um, uh, in 
this kind of uh, very nice atmosphere and location outside also the big screen. But of course, a big screen is always good for animation. Well, I would like to say, mate, might um, thank you so much for a fascinating talk and for showing some really quite remarkable work. So uh, I'd like to give you a round of applause, actually. May I give you a round of applause? I think that was absolutely marvellous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Um Jude and uh, Rita, have we time for a, a short Q&A? Um, definitely. Um, may I start with a with a question, but perhaps to, to uh, kick things off, might. Um, I, I found it extremely heartening that the sophistication and the, the atmosphere, the experimental nature of the studio continued after Perestroika, after the terrible changes, and has retained its identity. I was just interested to know um, how the studio managed uh, at a time when um, funding, state funding was being removed and commercial pressures were coming in, in this new um, commercial marketplace. Uh, how, how did you manage to navigate this? How did Arvo manage to navigate this? Yes, it is uh, um, uh, one again that uh, today we have the Arvo in middle point of the view, but of course we, we can't underestimate the others, uh, filmmakers around him. Of course, uh, it was uh, Preet Pern and Jano Polna from Jonisim and Kalev Dam that it was kind of animation as general itself. It was also kind of flag of Estonian film industry at all, because it has got his uh, international uh, 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 re, uh, reputation kind of so that uh, it has also kind of cultural uh, value itself in society so that uh, if for example unfortunately the, the documentary filmmakers and the feature filmmakers they had no possibilities to make the funny uh, the films but the animation has got some support from the government and it's um, it was a little amount but enough to uh, to make some films. But of course, we can't forget this um, forgot this uh, international uh, attention. For example, from Iceland, uh, filmmaker animation filmmaker uh, he has made the kind of uh, calendarium and Radar Dobuk. Uh, it was kind of uh, support uh, from a board that uh, the ideas from a board were uh, possible to make in our studio already. It was kind of not uh, commissional work, let's say in these terms, not it was commercial as a commissional work or from Finland, uh, there were serious uh, Urpo and Turpo, what allows to, uh, to, uh, to survive the studio actually in these terms that they had uh, our facilities and our technical a part, a technical part, and also the, the people who made the puppets and decorations, they may uh, had possibility to make the work for those films. What actually was not uh, uh, no, initiated in our studio, but were coming from a board to, to use our facilities because uh, it was a very huge uh, support. Is the Nuku film one of the biggest um, stop motion studios in North Europe, actually? So it's yes, good. that's it's correct. Facilities in there. Yes, that was uh, that is uh, correct to say, and uh, that was also maybe the uh, helping uh, moment at this time that uh, that uh, we were open to the world one hand to uh, and there was access into this uh, knowledge what we had in our studio and of course uh, there were some uh, commercial works what were coming uh, from the board but um, thanks to the <laughs> highest that um, the people who find us they were also uh, more artistically um, tried as as uh, maybe the mainstream that they that we don't have to adapt ourselves to these criteria of commercial work, but there are commercials what are looking uh, from Estonia 
uh, the idea is that they already know what they can get from the Estonia, this surrealistic world and this experimental world. And, and it was like very well uh, adapted with this from the both sides, from this, um, um, from the Nuku film uh, part and also from these people who were looking this materialization of this, their ideas. So there's a the whole combination. There's people internationally who are using Nuku Film Studios because of the facilities. There's all the technical expertise. Obviously, it's, it's the foundation of this success. Yeah. And also, would you say that there is also, um, there wasn't a sort of Estonian pride in this area of work as well that meant perhaps it had a state were, were um, kind to this part of the industry as well and wanted it to be a good thing for Estonia, would you say that that was part of the picture too or not? Yeah, I think it, what, because also in Riga, Riga, there was also very good studio. It was a very good puppet film studio, but what was different maybe, I am not sure, maybe my colleagues from the Latvia can say more precisely, but uh, I think that in Estonia, that the people don't uh, separate themselves to look uh, for the better future by themselves, but they keep uh, themselves together. That the knowledge was together and the, the uh, technical apartment was together, even it was hard, but they managed to keep uh, together. I think this is was, the, from my viewpoint, uh, very important of that, that in other parts in the Soviet Union, everybody was looking uh, the, by him themselves. And then the, and the, it was disappearing somehow. So it's sort of a collective um, spirit and um, yes. character that was... Yeah, the good atmosphere itself and, yeah. and, 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 uh, and kind of uh, friendship, let's say, between the filmmakers, because uh, for example, this generation of 80s, uh, they were not only together working, but also in the free time, they were very often together. They made some ex uh, exhibitions um, of art together and they spent it there uh, in the football playing or, or in, uh, it was kind of family style, community, let's say, in these terms and very friendly. Thanks. That's really interesting. Martin. Um, it, I think, uh, Mike, you've kind of covered it. And um, as Jude ha and uh, Rita have shown in earlier um, episodes of this series, that in other countries in the former Soviet Union, the situation started to fall apart with a, a migration of um, animators to the US and uh, also very little money apart from commercial projects coming in and that the animation industry um, started to come unraveled. It, it's very reassuring to hear that the situation was, was held together um, in Estonia and in, uh, in Nuku film in particular. And also maybe it's important that uh, the artists or filmmakers or directors or uh, that they also don't, uh, that they were like, um, I don't know how it is in English, but uh, that they don't break in their uh, marriage to animation. It's uh, that, uh, for example, uh, the artists that they still continue, they continue to be love in animation. That they even wow. there maybe was possibility to make more money or to get a better job, but they still, um, how to say, the heart was, and these are also nowadays in animation, for example, and uh, and especially the persons uh, who were like uh, um, who had authority, kind of that uh, that they were honest somehow. Of course, there was some no uh, struggling in themselves, or uh, but it was not like major. I think that's a very nice point, perhaps, to close on, that the animators remained in love with animation and remained married to it, and it didn't come unraveled. I think that's a very positive uh, lesson to draw uh, from this evening. 
Um, I fear that uh, we may need to wrap up quite soon. Um, Jude and Rita, would you like to give some closing thoughts or would anyone like to ask a, um, a question? I was uh, wondering why in particular in the Soviet Union, the puppets and the animations were such a strong feature. I only remember it from East Germany as a child because we had some of those films uh, in the East German film industry and in, on the television. And I never seen that extent uh, of, of animation or that type of animation in West Germany later when we moved away from the East. And there was a real a severe difference. And I was wondering why the Soviet Union was so interested in that style of film to support it. Mm -hmm. It's a tricky thing that also, if we're talking about uh, Soviet animation, maybe I can't say generally because I am not uh, straightly from this generation, but uh, so much as I had uh, from my older colleagues heard, it is that um, that the puppet or, or or cartoon also that this was area animation was area thought mainly for children and there was not so strong uh, censorship as maybe in documentary and in uh, feature and especially for example i think that um, the, the the school of czech puppet animation and polish puppet animation that they were like uh, ruling and there was also behind kind of metaphysic, metaphysica of uh, puppets it themselves. It's already like puppet culture in Czech. It has kind of golem stuff, let's say, mm -hmm. at least. And uh, and the puppets in uh, the puppets and children, it, they were looking like they belong together. But uh, the animators that they use these uh, common things to their own language. Mm -hmm. So that one hand, the uh, censors and the uh, supporters, they you know are puppets and children. Okay, it's we understand everything is somehow clear, clear, clear. But on the other hand, it has another um, level of uh, way of to think, and it was more like uh, I I don't I can't say that uh, or I will too much uh, mystifize it, but <laughs> but uh, there was. Um, uh, kind of uh, mystification and uh, and and also another part is to important to keep in mind that there was attitude that um, puppet animation is less expensive as cartoon. It is pure like uh, administrative part of it also that um, that um, in the fifties and sixties there was like believe. Uh, that it's much easier to make uh, puppet animation because you don't need so much um, uh, uh, makers uh, all who paint and coloring and, and making uh, ink and so on. And there is the, this amount of the team is a uh, little bit smaller and uh, that's why it is much more cheaper as maybe the cartoon at this time in, in until it was the digital computer system was coming in. So that's why maybe the puppet animation was not only the content why it's so popular as it more, was more just like economical reason also, but uh, but it's um, it's not so uh, not yet so clear. <laughs> it's fascinating, isn't it? I think we yeah. should have another uh, we could have another sort of episode or show looking at puppet tree in general um in the form of Soviet Union yeah I hoped you were going to say something like that Jude uh, because um I was yeah interested to know what might happen next I feel that Perils of Perestroika is a very very strong um series or, or strand and I do hope um that it continues um would you like to say a little bit about um about other projects coming out of uh, Perils of Perestroika that we uh, we talked about a few days ago. 
Well, just that it's going on, really. I don't want to bore everybody with, <laughs> with it because I think it's real tired now and I want to just talk about tonight. Oh. But okay. I just want to say thanks. And I want to say that, yeah, we will go on. We are going to go on, aren't we, Rita, with Perils? Yeah, yeah definitely. We, we've got the other shows in mind and other projects and we... Uh, 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 there's still uh, lots of filmmakers alive <laughs> yes. from Perestroika time, so we hope to talk to many more. Yeah, and, and you were talking about Latvia. We, we would love to. We were in touch with, sort of indirectly, with Ro Rosa, Rosa Stiebra. Mm -hmm. um, would love to talk to her. I really hope so. But yeah, we'll see. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's time to say good night to everyone. Thank you, everyone who's attended from all around the world. It's really lovely to see you. Um, uh, and um, yes, yeah, so so good night and uh, see you very soon. As I say, I'm hoping to have another event in December, which will, will also be an online one. I do hope that you'll be able to make it. So I'll say good night from London Animation Club. But Jude and Rita and mate, uh, do you want to, uh, might, do you want to uh, stay on the line for a second just for a quick chat afterwards? Okay. Yes. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>